Hello everyone, welcome to Blender Savage. So in the previous video, I showed you how to model this uh, panda, kawaii panda, and then we bonded all the uh, objects around the panda to the torso here. Parent-child bond, made this a parent, make, made all these uh, limbs and the head, children to the, uh, the parent here being the torso. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna show you how to animate it. So if you haven't seen the uh, previous video, uh, I'll put the link in the description. You can check it out. So here I am. I'm gonna right-click the stomach here. That's the key to center it. Boom. Spin the wheel to zoom out. All right, cool. Now I, I need to add lighting for my uh, animation here because if I go to render, it might be all dark. So here's the um, in the bottom header to the right of object mode. Click inside the white circle and select rendered. You get this uh, viewport shading menu. Rendered. There you go. It looks very well lit. That's because I lit it up earlier. I added extra lamps. So in the other uh, in the other video, I don't think I showed you guys how to do that. So you want to do seven, hit seven for top view. You might have to zoom out, but look for an icon that looks like this. That's your lamp. That's your light source. That's where your light is coming from. So you're gonna right click it to select it. Most likely it's gonna be up here somewhere, and you're gonna create duplicates of it. You do Shift D, move the mouse, and then left click to drop it. Then shift D again, move the mouse, left click to drop it, and you're just adding uh, lights, additional light sources. And you can go over here to rendered, see how that looks. There it is. Now it looks brighter because I added more lights. One for front view. There's a front of my panda there. Let it render out. There we go. Cool. So that looks good there. Go back to rendered, solid view, seven for top view. So right now I added uh, these three light sources. Uh, let's make our panda walk forward a little bit. So we got to add more light sources to uh, to the path. So here's one I duplicated earlier, G for grab. Move that one there. Right click that one. Oh, I'll do right click this one. G for grab and I'll put it here. All right, this way it lights the way uh, into the path that we're walking in. Because if, um, if there's a light here, here, and then it walks past these lights and there's no lights here, then the light's going to be behind the panda and there'll be nothing to light up the front of the panda. Here's our camera over here. So whatever the uh, camera sees, that's what the uh, viewer would see when it comes to animating. So it's zero on the number pad. There's a camera view right there. Cool. So right now let's adjust our camera. So I want the camera to have the, uh, the panda on the right side. So I want the panda to walk across the camera from right to left. So uh, hit zero on the number pad, access your camera view. And then if you want to control the camera from here, hold on shift and then F, F for frame, F for frank, F for fresh. And then move your mouse. See, you can move it around. I'm going to adjust it like right about there. If your uh, panda, and then you left click to drop it or hit the enter key. If your panda looks uh, really big or really small inside your frame, you can hit uh, shift and F again to control the frame. Hold on the S key and you can zoom out. See, It'll hold down the W key and you can zoom forward. I guess you move the mouse. Hold on the A key, pan left. Hold down the D key, pan right. So it's A, W, S, D on your uh, keyboard. All those keys are next to each other. One, it's somewhere like right there. So S was to move back, W forward, D to the right, A to the left. All right, and then left click or enter. So you can commit to uh, that position there. All right, now one for front view. Right at the center of the panda, decimal key, zoom in center, cool. Spin the wheel, zoom out. Now I'm gonna repose my panda for the starting position. Uh, but first, I want to activate the um, automatic keyframe insertion button. I call it the record button. It's down here. So here's the bottom header, and right below the bottom header is the uh, timeline panel. So make it a little wider for you guys. Make a double-sided arrow here. There we go. And here's the uh, record button. This is red button right here. Left-click it. Automatic keyframe insertion. So now every time I do a pose, it'll add it here in the timeline. So currently, my timeline is 250 frames. Tells me right here. Uh, starts at frame one, ends at 250. I can make this number bigger, it'll make my timeline bigger. So my timeline here is the um, how many frames are in my animation. A frame is like a frame in a piece of film, or uh, a cell in cell animation, or a page in a flipbook. So it's uh, right now it's 250 little small pictures that will put together into an animation. Let's reduce it down to 80. So I'm going to go right here to N. I'm going to left click on the 250 to the right of N. Left click, type in 80, enter. Cool, and I just cut it down. See that big uh, lighter gray area? Just got reduced down to 80 frames. And I'm starting here at frame one. And it tells me here I'm at frame one. Cool, there's this green line right here. That's the uh, 
the courser tells me where frame I'm in. So on this frame, I'm going to reposition my panda. I'm going to try to stand it up straight. So I'm going to right click the uh, arm right here. R for rotate, move my mouse down. Left click to commit to that change. Right click that one, R for rotate, move the mouse down. Cool. And then we rotate the head. So I'm right click the head. And while I'm in this view, I can only uh, do rotations in this respect. Like along the, uh, the Y axis. And you just go in this circle. But if I want to make the head say no, I have to change over to top view. So I'm going to right click the head, seven for top view. Then I can adjust it here. R for rotate, move the mouse. Left click, there we go. One for front view. Three for right view. The legs look like they're kind of walking. So I'm going to straighten them out. Right click that one. R for rotate, bam. Right click that one, R for rotate, and there we go. One for front view. Cool. So I'm gonna hold on the shift key and select every part of the body here. There we go. So hold on the shift key and right click, oop, missing the leg. And right click the, every limb, head, and torso. So select the whole thing. Now, just in case uh, these don't get recorded, by doing this, I get to select everything. And I can record uh, all of this into my timeline. Because every object in Blender has its own uh, timeline uh, associated with it. So I'll show you guys later after we do some more poses. So I'm at I. Cool. I get the uh, insert keyframe menu and select location rotation scale. Cool. Now that added a keyframe for every object. See there's a little yellow line back there. You can't see right now. So let's go over to frame 20. Cool. There it is. There's a yellow line. It's a keyframe. So key event. That's what's going on right there. The key event here is that's, that's where we're starting with this uh, key position, the original position here. Now I'm over at frame 20. Hit three for right view. Select your torso, right click the torso, and then move it forward. Move it forward, you see in the grid in the background. Let's move it forward about two blender units, about two, two grid marks forward. And let's see, zero for the camera view. Let's see if it moves here. I'm gonna hold down the left mouse button on the green arrow, on the green cursor. Yeah, I can see it moving forward. Got the, uh, the panda kind of hovering here, and I'll pose the, the limbs in a bit. All right, three for right view. Make sure you're back on frame 20. If you didn't get it exactly in frame 20, you can type in 20 here. It'll take you to frame 20. Now right click the leg here. See if you notice the uh, the yellow line disappeared there because um, it's on its own separate timeline. See there's the uh, timeline, the yellow frame for the timeline on the stomach, not for the leg. So once I pose this leg here, it'll insert a keyframe for it. Off for rotate. Let's create a walking stance. Right click the other one. Off for rotate. Bam. Right click this one. Off for rotate. I want to select the other arm. I can't see it here, so I hit one for front view. There it is. Right click. Three for right view. And rotate it forward. There it is. Let's rotate it all the way out so I can see them from the opposite sides. I'm going to rotate the head as well. R for ro R, uh, excuse me. Right click the head. Seven for top view. And then while on top view here, I just hit the decimal key to zoom into it. Hit R for rotate and rotate it over just a slight. One for top, one for front view. Zoom out. Cool. So let's check out this animation here. There we go. Zero for camera view. And just move this green line here. Hold down the left, left, hold down the left mouse button and drag across. Cool. I'm gonna go over to frame 40 and do the opposite pose. So first I'm gonna select the stomach, R for right view, and then use the green arrow widget, move over to another two blender units over to the left. Hold down the left mouse button, drag it over. Cool. And just change the pose of the of the legs here. R for rotate, move it back. Oops. R for rotate, move forward. R for rotate, move forward. Right click the other one. R for rotate, move it back. And then I'm going to select the head too. Right click the head. Seven for top view. R for right view. Sorry, R for rotate. Left click. And front view. Cool. Zero for camera view. Check out the animation. All right. 60, going over to 60. Oops, see, I got 61. Left click there, boom, now I'm at 60. Right click the stomach, three for right view. Forward two more blender units. Change the position of the legs. We're just alternating. Just doing the strides. Right click, there we go. Alternate the head, right click it. Seven top view. Spin the wheel, or for, for rotate, left click. All right, so I'm pretty confident it's moving there. See, there we go. I'll go to the last frame, so I can try to get it here like that. Or I can hit this button here, it takes me over to my last frame. I can hit this button over here on the left, it takes me over to my first frame. But I want to be on the 
on the last frame. So I'm going to take a left click on this one and it'll jump over to the last frame. All right, so I'm just going to change the uh, position here. Sorry, you have to move it forward, right? Let's see. Yeah, I got to move it forward some more. Three for right view, right click the sun make. I'm going to zoom out and use the green arrow widget. Move it over there. Zero for camera view. Who is out of view right there? There we go. Even though it's out of view, I still got to change the uh, those poses. Or else it's going to look like you're just sliding over there. See? Sliding. Sliding, gliding. All right. Seven for top view. Right click the head. Rotate it over. Cool. One for front view. Right click this arm here. Three for right view. There we go. Alternate the positions. Alternate the positions. All right. So you got zero for camera view. Hit the play button. Cool. Let me A to deselect. And there's my animation. Panda, panda, panda. All right. Let me make sure it's. Let me make sure it's well lit. So I'm gonna pause here. And I'm gonna go to one of these future frames. So my frame 70. I'm gonna go over here rendered. See how that looks. Cool. It looks lit. I'll go to 60. All right. So it's not that dark. If it's still really dark, or if you want to add more light, very shadowy, then go over to your first frame. Go back over to solid view here. Set for top view, and just create additional source, additional duplicates of your light sources of your lamp, and just add them there to the path. You right click, Shift D, Shift D, Shift D, and now it'll look brighter. Zero number pad, rendered view. Cool. And if you play it, if you uh, hit the play button in the render view, you won't be able to see it. It's too much for the computer to process. You just might as well just pause it and just left click on the different frames so you can see your animation. Cool. So that's the animation, but you still do not have an animation file. So to create the uh, the video file for the animation, you're gonna go over here to the properties panel. You're gonna click on render. It's this camera icon right here. If you have the camera selected, it's probably already activated by default. Right now I have the camera selected because I'm in the camera view. I'm going to scroll all the way down. And then look for a manila folder icon. It's below output. Don't click on output because it's going to close up the menu. So you want it to expand. You don't want to collapse it. Now you're going to click on the manila folder. And here on the left side, you can select where you want to save your video. And I have a lot of stuff. So here I have a folder called Blender Animations. And it's going to name it Panda Walk. I already have a file with that name. Earlier I attempted to uh, create the uh, video, but it crashed on me. So Panda Walk, it's going to overwrite that older one, the old one, except. And then scroll down a little more further down. And then below the Manila folder, look for PNG right here. PNG. If I leave it as PNG, it's going to give me 80 pictures. I don't want any pictures. I want a video file. See right here, this one has film. I'm going to switch over to AVI JPEG. If I leave it as PNG, uh, those familiar with PNGs, so that's a bitmap graphic. EMPs, just a simple JPEG. But EVI JPEG will uh, group them together into a, into a video file. And then you will click uh, animation and it'll render your animation. And that's it. Depending like, on the processing power of your computer, on the speed of your computer, it might take, uh, I don't know, it could take a couple minutes, it could take half an hour. Depends how fast your computer is. And that's it. Thank you for watching, guys. Please subscribe. Uh, like, share, or check out my book on Amazon. I got Blender Activity uh, book for beginners, activity book for those new to 3D modeling using Blender, and I uh, just set up a pre-order for how to model cute Japanese kawaii animals using Blender for beginners and hobbyists. And I'll put a tutorial in there, a very detailed one, on how to model and animate this panda. Thank you guys, and have a good day. Let's do a wave here. There we go, bam.